Well, first I want to thank the uh, program committee, uh, specifically Jeff and Yuram, for the uh, kind invitation to uh, begin on the podium. I, as Jeff can attest to, uh, was fairly adamant that I didn't feel I had anything uh, valuable to add to this uh, important agenda of this meeting, but after uh, numerous uh, agitations, I ultimately succumbed to uh, Jeffrey's pressure and thought I would share with you some comments about uh, acute care surgery. And I want to again add uh, my uh, uh, appreciation for all the efforts that Luca and Fosta have done for this organization. Uh, we've gone a long way from that little gathering in Bologna to now. And uh, I think we're just on the uh, steep slope of the growth of this uh, great organization. So what I want to talk about today, uh, and somewhat uh, perhaps controversial, is uh, survival of our uh, profession acute care uh, surgery. And I want to go through the various elements I think are important to uh, consider as we grow as a uh, discipline internationally. Uh, our reputation, our autonomy, uh, being gratified as a surgeon, and finally, uh, un unfortunately, economics. Now, the evolution of emergency surgery, uh, certainly in the United States, but I think broadly throughout the world, uh, was stimulated by the fact it was uh, realized that patients uh, didn't have access to quality uh, surgeons under emergent uh, conditions. And originally, uh, we called this emergency surgery and then uh, acute care surgery uh, because it encompassed uh, other areas such as trauma and critical care in the United States. But I think perhaps uh, Andy Peitman's, Peitzman's new uh, idea that's in the Journal of Trauma in the coming issue is that uh, we really do represent sort of rescue surgery uh, in addition to uh, operating on those entities that are uh, immediately life or limb threatening, and we now seem to be the uh, service that takes care of the inconvenience complications of our colleagues. Well, why do we need this specially? It's uh, largely driven by the fact that in virtually all developed countries, we have excessive uh, specialization of general surgery. I mean, it's really uh, continued to grow in the United States. We now have a, a university hospital that has uh, virtually uh, separate divisions of every single organ you can imagine in sections for whether you do it open or laparoscopic. It's got to uh, a ridiculous level, and worse yet, uh, these uh, specialties uh, now all have fellowships. So there is uh, very little opportunity for uh, really broad general surgery uh, training uh, today. So I'd emphasize first, uh, how can we emerge uh, as a respected uh, profession, our reputation? And I think that is nothing I need to dwell on uh, with the group assembled here. What separates us from the rest is that we provide care in a timely fashion uh, and with uh, quality. Uh, we're doing research, uh, setting standards, uh, and we're innovating to continue to improve the care of the patient requiring emergent surgery. And you've just heard a nice review by uh, FOSTA of all the tremendous uh, uh, contributions of this society. And this is what it really uh, builds our reputation. Uh, we can render uh, excellent patient care, but frankly, it's what we put on paper that internationally uh, rises, uh, raises the uh, respect for our discipline. Now, autonomy is another story, and I think this is a very important issue we need to address uh, throughout universities at this point. At one time, uh, as many of you know, and Jeff alluded to, uh, at the Denver General Hospital, our entire department uh, uh, consisted of acute care surgeons. We did, for 35 years, every operation conceivable. We had no cardiac surgeons, no thoracic surgeons, no oncology surgeons, uh, no endocrine surgeons. We, as trauma surgeons, did virtually every operation except open heart uh, that was sent to the university. But, as my uh, colleague Dr. Mayer continues to remind me, <laughs> uh, perhaps a little outdated on my view of how we run the acute care surgery. 
But I would argue uh, uh, strongly that we need to establish uh, a division within our departments at all universities. At the University of Colorado at this point, uh, acute care surgery is a section under GI and this severely compromises our ability to define what our discipline is. And I would argue that if we are the ones who are on call 24 hours, seven days a week, we should be the ones who decide when we see a patient in the emergency department whether we want to operate in that patient or not. We need to establish our uh, research uh, priorities, not have our division head and GI dictate that. And then we need to negotiate, of course, uh, support and uh, compensation as well as uh, collaboration. I think you know, most importantly, we need to bear in mind that we are surgeons, acute care surgery. Uh, we don't just perform <laughs> procedures that no one else wants to do, but we actually perform procedures uh, no one else can do. And we need to continue to strive uh, to reach uh, that mark in my estimation. Uh, this was a review in the Journal of Trauma last year uh, out of uh, UC Sacramento that reviewed acute care surgery in the United States. They reviewed the so-called University Health Systems Consortium, which represents major universities in the United States. And they were excited to report that over 50% of universities now have formal uh, divisions or sections of acute care surgery. And then they went through the list of what we do as academic acute care surgery. And here's a list. We place catheters, we do wound care, we debrief a little muscle, we insert chest tubes, we do tracheostomies. Uh, oh yeah, we do a few gallbladders and we take out an appendix. There's a list of operations we do as acute care surgeons in the United States. These are operations our junior residents do every day. Why would we train 10 years to be an academic surgeon and be relegated to this list of operations? I would argue this is one of our greatest challenges, but to persist, persist as a recognized uh, discipline, we need to increase the envelope in our operative uh, domain. Furthermore, and this is perhaps uh, unique to the United States where we do critical care, we actually have our colleagues suggesting that we should admit all the head injury. And as pointed out here in this uh, review from Arizona, they looked at all the traumatic brain injuries admitted to the trauma service over a year and noted that only 10% of them required a craniectomy. So their conclusion, astounding to me, was, well, that every patient with brain injury should be admitted to the acute care service and the neurosurgeon should only be called in when they need an operation. Why, again, would we want to spend our entire lives being residents for neurosurgeons? So finally, uh, operative skills, and that's uh, one facet, of course, exciting this meeting, is we need to think about how we can keep it cutting edge and uh, continue to expand our operative uh, capabilities. One of which is obvious, and that is to continue to develop techniques for minimally invasive, not only laparoscopic, but thoroscopic. And I would argue that in the future, we need to take on endovascular work, and this is currently, I think, in uh, progress in the United States, uh, where uh, there are a number of trainees now that are obtaining uh, vascular training to be acute care surgeries, and finally, we need to continue to consider challenging operative cases. But what can we do unique as acute care surgeons laparoscopically? Well, I would argue uh, transcystic common duct uh, explorations. We talked about this morning uh, the need to intervene within 24 hours for acute cholecystitis. If those patients have common duct stones, that's often what delays their care for up to a week because by the time the GI medicine gets around the ERCP, they now have a perforated gallbladder. We ought to be able to go in within 24 hours, take that gallbladder out, and most of the patients we can explore successfully through a cystic duct. Uh, repairing uh, perforated ulcers uh, laparoscopically and lysis of adhesions ought to be, again, a special uh, capability of our service. And finally, issues such as loop ileostomy for uh, C. diff and uh, anastomotic leaks and so on ought to be within our capacity. And thoroscopic, I think, is a, a talent that we need to uh, emphasize and one of which has been largely ignored in the United States. In the review I alluded to, uh, 
from uh, UC Sacramento that looked at the uh, universities in the United States, they remarked that the acute care surgeon in the United States did less than one video assisted thoroscopic operation a year. Their conclusion, not that we need to train people to do it, but no, but maybe we ought to take that off the list in acute care surgery. Again, astounding. We need to take this on aggressively. We're the ones that take care of these patients with a sepsis in the chest, and we should be able to operate on them and clean out their infections as well as any other uh, uh, type of uh, surgeon. Pulmonary air leaks, uh, mediastinal drainage for descending mediastinitis, and pericardial fluid, again, ought to be completely within our capabilities. And the vascular, and this is uh, perhaps uh, the most contentious area, but one, again, in which uh, there's evidence in the United States that acute care surgeons can capably introduce uh, resuscitative endovascular balloon occlusion uh, devices and uh, perform <coughs> aerotography in the uh, operating suite and even selective embolization, particularly for uh, pelvic fractures. And yes, all of you in here, just like me, uh, can learn these techniques. We have to have our colleagues uh, uh, share with their our experience. But on the other hand, we need to commit ourselves to training. Uh, I learned to put Reboas in by going to the uh, uh, cardiology lab and watching the uh, cardiologist place wires. It didn't take long to figure out how to find puncture, put five wires, and then put an affix wire in and put a sheath in the uh, common femoral artery. But that's what we need to do if we're going to continue to expand our operative capability. We need to make the commitment to go have our colleagues teach us these uh, various uh, techniques. And finally, in open procedures, I, I think we ought to continue to look at open procedures that are gratifying. I, frankly, uh, if I did my last uh, rotten gallbladder at 3 o'clock in the morning, I wouldn't uh, lose any sleep over it. Those aren't fun operations. Maybe you guys like them, but I don't. First thing I want to know in the morning is, what's the bilirubin? Uh, and is the patient out of septic shock? I hate that operation. And that's all we do. But we need to find some elective cases and work that we do routinely to uh, challenge us and allow us to exploit technical skills. And I would argue that one of the uh, greatest opportunities is hemodialysis uh, AV uh, fistula formation. I don't understand how uh, we don't have the grounds to argue that we should be doing these operations as much as any other service. And in our particular institution, we've done uh, AV fistulas uh, for the history of the institution. And when Jeff was there, he and I shared all the AV access uh, Pre-perioneal pelvic fracking, uh, perhaps uh, controversial, certainly, but at the right time, right uh, hospital, uh, that is a unique opportunity for us as acute care surgeons. And finally, and again, evolving in terms of selection, our operations like uh, rib plating for uh, flail uh, chest. And finally, I, I can't uh, avoid the issue of economics. Uh, if you're going to become a viable division, uh, as many of you know, who are leaders in this arena, you have to get uh, professional coders to accurately describe not only the operation you're doing, but most importantly, the comorbidity, because most of our patients have extensive comorbidity that uh, justifies why they spend more time in the hospital. And finally, uh, and again, I think astounding, in the United States, as probably many of you know, we're paid now on uh, what the patient thinks of our care. not whether they have a short length of stay or when they get back to work, but simply does a patient uh, believe they receive the best care. So we can't ignore it. We need to have uh, professionals uh, within our divisions to help us decide how to uh, tailor our care to ensure that the patient believes they are getting the best care available. So in sum, I appreciate this time on the podium, and I emphasize again, I think our reputation is based on service, we need autonomy, and we have to be independent divisions within departments uh, to uh, execute uh, our goals. Gratification, I think, uh, frankly, we're surgeons. We were born that way. That's why we trained in that arena, and we need to find our way back in the operating room and expand our operating uh, domain. And finally, economics, we need to not neglect the fact that we need to get credit for the work we do. I appreciate your attention. We thank Jim for the lecture. Presidential lecture, he has no question, so we go ahead. Thank you very much for everything.
Thanks for saving me.